Hey, Film Vaulters. Welcome to the Film Vaulters. I'm Mitch Burns. I'm your host. And this week, I'm here with listener of the Film Vault, Mike Avaloni. How are you, Mike? I'm doing great, Mitch. Uh, pleasure pleasure to be here. Oh, thank you. It's uh, it's great to have you. Um, and uh, so y- you say you found out about the Film Vault in a un- unique way, and I'm really happy you didn't um, yeah. tell me that. So I- I'd love to hear it. Uh, you know, it's not a unique way in the sense of you can never believe this happened, but it's mm-hmm. the, it's a very rare way I find out about something, which is at a party. And I, oh. don't, I don't go to parties very often, uh, but, you know, maybe like 10 years ago, maybe a little more, I was at a party and I was just chatting it up with some guy there about whatever. And, and you know, I have no idea where this person is at this point, but I'm very yeah. curious. And we were just going back and forth uh, about, oh, I like podcasts. And he's like, do you like movies? Like, yeah, like movies, like you got to listen to this podcast, The Film Vault. And I was like, yeah, I was like, you got to listen to it. And I looked it up on my phone and added it and, you know, slowly but surely became a longtime listener. So I'd love to find out where that guy is because I don't even know how he got to the party. Never seen him before. Never seen him since. So, And do you remember his name? No, not the slightest clue. No, that's I, hilarious. I think it was um, a white guy. That's about all I remember. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it narrows it down. That narrows it down. Um, and you're a Patreon member. And mm-hmm. um, I do, Ali, after you said that you wrote in some fan flictions, I definitely have recognized your name uh, several times. So um, I'm sorry if I've skipped over your fan fiction. Oh, or... no. There's, there's so many quality fan fictions, fan fictions out there, you know? like Yeah, I, I, get to I feel so yeah no i I feel so bad when i'm like like a new movie comes out like barbie right and so many people are putting in their uh fan flictions and i'm like okay there's 40 reviews here or not 40 but like i get i like to pick two one negative one positive to try to get both sides and then i'm like well that's two out of you know but so at least the uh when we do the like ftv score or whatever kind of you could do a I whole do. podcast that's just fan flictions. Yeah. You end up with so many, I bet. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, as always, my guest picks a topic that the Film Vault podcast has done over his 20-year tenure. And today, Mike has chosen top five movies with one-word titles, mm-hmm. which we will be doing a little bit later. Um, but first, I have some questions so we can get to know Mike a little bit more. Um, oh, exciting. Yeah. First off, uh, what are some of your favorite movies and or directors favorite movies and directors you know uh i'll start with my <laughs> favorite movies of all time are the godfather and mm-hmm. the godfather part two mm-hmm. uh which is a very generic answer i'm starting there because <laughs> i think it's it's totally worthy of it every time yeah. i go like a year or so without seeing the godfather and i sit down and watch it i'm always like maybe i'm maybe culture has just told me this is this is so good and right maybe it's not and then every time i'm just floored glued to the screen uh, just so obsessed and, and so into what's happening. So yeah, the one and two, and then the big Lebowski is my other, yeah. is the one I kind of go to as my favorite movie just yeah. cause uh, gets better every time. And oh, the characters are so perfect. The dialogue feels like they're making it up, but they're not, you know, it's mm-hmm. all very deliberate. All those us and ums are in the script. The humor huh. is so good. The char- the characters just bounce off each other so well, like a symphony. You know, they oh, yeah. Uh, the there's like loud, soft, they, and it it it's music to my ears, really. So yeah, I love that movie so much. No, a good script can be like that. That's for sure. Um, I was just thinking of something. No, I I love when hearing people's favorite movies because they yeah. are usually ones like especially when you're a film vault fan, they are usually ones that the guys love mm-hmm. i find like they love the big lebowski and um i find it's hard if like one of your favorite movies like the guys hated it i don't know maybe that would be um that would be a, it wouldn't you wouldn't like the show as much but it, uh, it'd be a point of contention at the least yeah exactly exactly um and then so tell us a little bit about yourself you told me you do music you have your mm-hmm. own podcast um, I'd love to hear a little yeah, bit more about you that. You know, I'm definitely a, a guy, like I work in IT, but I'm I'm very much a, a man of okay. my hobbies. Like I, I feel like life becomes worth living when you have your hobbies. Like you just fend off existential dread with Preach. hobbies. And uh so some movies obviously are a huge thing for me. And mm-hmm. I've been writing movie reviews also for um 
what over five years now five or six seven nice a number of years yeah and if you if you check my website i'll plug it later i won't plug it too many times <laughs> but you can read you know i have a, a thousands of uh, reviews written there so i uh you know watching like siskel and ebert and that kind of stuff and then uh you know the film vault and every everybody in between that's been you know i'm always just a big fan of film criticism so writing reviews and then uh i have a podcast too so uh any, any, any way i can get get out my uh love of film and talk about what the films mean and the director said and you know yeah hear other people's thoughts i love that and uh i mean so movies is obvious love music i listen to music all the time play music and uh do stand-up comedy uh from time to time nice not, not quite at the level of uh avery, avery you know, somebody right. A, a real funny man like that but uh i've done stand up around new york for you know uh dozens of times i've been on stage but no no like uh nowhere really impressive to speak of well, <laughs> having uh, performed at that's awesome you i've wanted to dabble into yeah. comedy but like i've written some stuff and then just never gotten the nerve to do it yeah like it's do did you start out like in front of family or friends or did you just get out there? How did oh, you... man, you're right. The The hardest thing is just doing it the first time. And in fact, there were multiple times I had. In a, so I live in New York City. Yeah, I'm sorry. I meant to ask that before. But yeah, I part of the reason I moved here is because I wanted to do comedy. And I felt like cool. this is one of the two cities you could kind of really make a go at it. So um there was this open mic somewhere near my office and I kept I knew when it was and I knew where it was <laughs> and there were multiple times I, I told myself I would go and I wouldn't go there was even a time I got to the door and like walked away uh but then eventually yeah. just you know pushed myself into doing it and yeah uh, it, it's really fun and exciting and um oh, that's, that's like, awesome. really really tough so yeah know, definitely admire and, someone like Avery who can you know find uh the success he's found with it and just keeps just keeps pushing like it, like you gotta it's it's such a I, we we talked about it a little bit on the program when I talked with him and you just gotta keep putting yourself out there or else you're done. So it's uh it's yeah. a it's a game like like everything is like I I I've transferred more into podcasting. So like I used to write movie reviews like you do on your site and mm -hmm. you know lengthy ones and and stuff. And I I try to post when it's a bigger movie. I try to. I like to write, so I I'm I'm similar in that way, um, but you gotta you gotta keep up with it, and uh, I'm glad you and you and you love that you you still like writing your reviews and yeah yeah they've become shorter over the years. I used to I used to have really yeah. long ones. I used to do occasional long ones, and now I do frequent short ones. Yeah yeah. So and, um, I would always have like I would have some that were like. I remember being like, oh, here's 3000 words or 4000 words on this movie. And it's like, mm -hmm. are they really reading it all? Or are they just looking at the writing and a few yeah. little things? Right. But I know it's one of those things. I mean, the, the, these type of art forms, you know, and any type of art, you kind of have to really want to do it for yourself because yeah. the, with stand up, sometimes you're doing it to like three people, if even that. And sometimes with, you know, nobody's read the movie review It's just sitting there in the, yeah you know, in the, in the desert yeah. waiting to be found. So, but, but you do it because it's, it's satisfying to do. And then exactly. Sometimes you stumble upon something worthwhile. So, yeah, I always tell fun. myself, you know, I, I do this for me. And, mm -hmm. you know, if I wasn't, if I didn't enjoy it and if I wasn't doing it for myself, I wouldn't do it because, you know, you, you get, you know, so little views or whatever. And yeah, you can't let it bring you down, but uh Yeah. It it's just it's it feels good to do and it makes life worth living. So so I'm with you on that. Yeah. Um and what kind of music do you do? Uh I play I play guitar mostly. Uh yeah. you know, I, I used to kind of like release stuff and but but I just sort of I don't know. P people who are good at music are really good at it and it's yeah. uh sort of um you know, when I play music now it's just for me and it's kind yeah. of like nobody hears it. It's just in my apartment. So Yeah. But uh, cool. another like cathartic kind of um, expressive, you know, art form to do. So that that's kind of who I am in that way. Okay, cool, cool. Um, and then do you have any memorable film vault moments that stick out for you over the over the years? 
Um, hmm. Something you found particularly you know, funny. Uh, you know, besides all the times I wrote in and it actually got read. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I won't, I won't play around myself. Um, you know, it's it's the the evolution of how I've kind of thought of these guys as time's gone on. You know, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. is kind of interesting, and I I just love their their personality and their their chemistry with each other and how mm-hmm. different they are, and they almost they almost shouldn't be friends, and yet yeah. here they are as two of the closest people to each other. Yeah. So, um, and they kind of have this you know Gen X radio personality mm-hmm. that uh, you don't get in the podcasting world as much. Mm-hmm. That that's kind of what I really uh, appreciate about it, and. Um, I kind of like just the the ongoing jokes of how Brian d- doesn't even like movies really and uh, how they almost yeah. shouldn't be doing this podcast, but yet here they are. And yeah. uh, then at first being like, Anderson's really like railing into Brian. Like, is, is why is he doing this? And then it, as I listen, I'm like, oh, I see why, he, you know, kind of see why he's getting railed into. But then also maybe you got to back off like a little bit. So <laughs> Their 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 dynamic is is everything. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I do love like what you said. Their like their generation. They kind of it doesn't really seem to matter what generation you are. You can mm-hmm. listen to them and and right. I don't know. I, I like. There's no boundaries there. They like these movies, and you know, or they don't like them, and. Well, that's They're what not I love, like a, I love about film too. Yeah, yeah, I love about film is like you can everybody's seeing these things. You know, if this movie's like when they reviewed RRR, something mm-hmm. that's like, what is this movie doing here in you know to the yeah. to us us in the United States or a movie that's you know uh, like a, a Gen Z movie or something mm-hmm. like that? Like did they, like yeah. bodies, bodies, bodies or whatever it yeah. is and bottoms. It, yeah, I oh, I love Bottoms by the way. Yeah, that was yeah, me too. It was great. fantastic. And yeah. uh, but just the the way like everyone can kind of experience these things from different cultures and different times and yeah. different generations and how uh, we can all kind of come together and get something different out of it. So that that's what I, that's what I love about uh, movies and how it brings people together in that way. Yeah, I agree. And people are so quick to you know, jump on Rotten Tomatoes, but at least it's bringing about conversation about movies. And, you know, I hate Rotten Tomatoes at times, but, you know, it's 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 a good gauge and there's conversation about it. And, you know, we even see I today, like, for instance, all the the ratings for Captain Marvel are coming out. Mm. And and it's like some people are hating it, some people are loving it. And in the comments, I'm seeing people like, "Well, I'm going to form my own opinion." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, good. That's the point. Yeah. Well, Go do that." You know what? That's another thing I love about the show is frequently I have a lot of you know film friends and you know, yeah. people I talk about movies with in different circles, different places. You know, yeah. And a lot of the times there'll be a movie that that everybody I know like hates, but somehow like these two guys loved it yeah. or. Or the other way around, where like yeah. everyone said it was brilliant, and these two guys are like, I didn't, I didn't get it, I didn't get yeah. it. It was, it was kind of boring, you know. So I like, feel like they're they they never they're never afraid to go against the grain. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. Like they, I don't know. Have you seen Killers of the Flower Moon? I have not. Somehow, no, somehow it's eluded me. Well, so, like it's, it's it's a big commitment, three and a half hours. Yeah. I mean, and so the boys obviously they haven't really loved it. So, mm-hmm. um, and I really liked it. So, like that's fine. And they're kind of going against. Yeah. It does eighty percent. Like, yeah, yeah, it does seem like a wide leap. But then another one was like, um, Bo is afraid. I loved, yeah. and they love too. But then a lot of people I talked to were like, this movie made me feel like terrible i i hate everything about yeah. it so uh that that was i was i was like that was like a fist pump moment like yeah, yeah. it's great i i feel very good and i feel very vindicated when they like a movie that i liked as well mm-hmm. that especially that is like you know some people like some people don't you're you know when they like it or anderson or just brian or whatever i feel like yes i feel like i have like someone on my team but yeah um 
Yeah. I know that you're almost watching it like sports, like rooting for the, oh, come on. Wait, exactly. Say something good, exactly. Yeah. Um, and sorry, what was the movie you were, you just brought up? Uh, I said Bo is Afraid. Is yeah, Bo is Afraid. Yeah, no, I meant to say I, I've really grown on that movie and I think I need to rewatch it as much as I don't want to, but it's just so wild and made me feel so many things. So, you know, it, it, I, it's, in, it's anxiety inducing. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and I think I just pulled away from that, like cringed away from that so much that I think I deserve a, a rewatch now that I can kind of know where it's yeah. going. Yeah, yeah, I watched it twice, and and uh, the okay. second time I was still impressed with it. But it is, it's not a feel good movie per se. So no. Uh, no, going down smooth, maybe not. But I'm I'm kind of just impressed with the filmmaking. Yeah, and Patty Lapone, that was uh, that was a kind of a fun treat. Oh yeah, um, she's tremendous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh wow, that was, that was she, cool. She doesn't do a lot of acting on screen. No, until now, no. So, so I was, was like, yeah, I was kind of like, oh, this is perfect. Like, well, <laughs> this is a great role for her um what have you seen recently i know we've kind of talked about a couple but like what have you seen recently that you've loved or hated uh this year yeah you know i i, I probably i always try to watch like a good amount of uh new releases mm -hmm. so i'll usually see you know uh you know 60 70 movies in a year okay of the, of the release year and then yep. maybe 300 or more for the whole year wow wow uh well movies i saw this, so i went to the new york film festival Oh, uh, which was in September. So there were a few movies I saw there that aren't out yet, but blew me away. Uh, oh, OK. And I'll and I won't you know, we could do a whole thing on this. So I'll, just, I'll limit it to just a few. But um, yeah, no, that's, that's the, the Zone of Interest, which is the <sighs> new Jonathan yes. Glazer movie. Yeah, is uh, uh, a powerful experience. OK, it is totally harrowing uh, harrowing yeah. and uh it, you don't even see anything that terrible. Okay. You know, it, it's all the, impl you know, the, the plot yeah. of it. And it's uh, actually, I, I don't know anything about it, um, but I'm such a huge under the skin fan that I'm just, mm. I'm just been craving it. <laughs> it's uh you know, it, it's about this family that lives there. Uh, they live right on the outskirts of Auschwitz. And the, the dad is the, the, oh. like in charge of Auschwitz, the, you oh know, my the, God. the director of it or whatever. But um, it's not wow. about the Holocaust and it's not about World War II and it's not about the Nazis. It's about a family trying to raise their kids and build a home together. Yeah. Which is a weird thing to experience because you're like, you're just seeing them as people. You forget that these monsters, these vile, like terrible, yeah. awful people from history were also they were regular people like that had yeah. families and like, like it's yeah. your brain almost can't compute it. And yeah. although they don't show you anything terrible, you're just like, it's chilling to, you know, see. Yeah. What... I think he did some of that in under the skin, like, you know, didn't always show you everything or like lead you to water. Like you weren't a hundred percent what was going on, but it was still some chilling moments. And so, no, I, I'm, I'm really excited. So have uh, you, yeah. The other one yeah. I saw was um, The Boy and the Heron, which is the new Miyazaki movie. Yes. Um, and that was one of his best. I've seen every Miyazaki movie. And oh. I want to say this is like top three. Wow. I'm not, not even exaggerating. It's phenomenal for hmm. Miyazaki even. Wow. Um, Do you think it could win the Oscar over Amazing or Spider-Man? I think it's a much better movie than Spider-Man. Yeah. I, I watched Across the Spider-Verse again last night. And this was, I mean, this is, it, it, it's just really clever and okay. uh, poetic. Oh, good. And, and it concludes at the end. There's an end of the story. You know, it's not, <laughs> it's not a tune in next time. Uh, yeah. Kind of moment. That really put a bad taste in my mouth. Cause like, I didn't love the first one that much. So I was really loving this one. And then I'm like, oh, really kind of took me out of it but yeah that's okay well and, and now then, we've got to wait like two years now because of the strike and everything so yeah which ended today did you hear that yes yes that was... i just posted about it on my instagram just saying like oh, oh finally wonderful yeah i gotta ring some bells about that that's really yeah. uh that's that's good for the everyone yeah and then uh, uh the best movie i saw this year at the new york film festival 
was Poor Things. I was going to ask if you saw it. Yes. Yeah, which is the new Yorgos Lanthimos movie. And that's mm-hmm. currently my number one movie of the whole year. Mm. Um, it is spectacularly entertaining, brilliant, clever, uh, looks so good, just mm-hmm. visually uh, dazzling. Mm-hmm. And Emma Stone is tremendous in it. She, mm-hmm. I don't want to, I don't really want to spoil what it's about because I didn't know. And it, it kind of blew me away what it was mm-hmm. ended up being about. But I'll, I'll say your character kind of evolves, you know, throughout it. Yeah. And she has to play like a lot of different notes and is just um, titillating. Okay. And it, like I, the movie's just entertaining, really clever uh, and thoughtful. It's it's everything you want in a movie. It, it's like one of my favorite movies ever. I'd actually wow. Say. It's that wow. it's really that good. Uh, really I'm that good. I'm pumped. I'm that's I'm so happy to hear that. Oh, I'm I'm glad you said those three movies because those are three that I am looking forward to and to hear that you like them. I'm I'm very excited. Yeah, so. those are those are in my top ten. In my good. top ten in the air. So good. And bottoms. <laughs> and b- bottoms is bottoms is in my top ten actually. I have yeah. bottoms at eight at eight and yeah. uh, I loved bottoms. I think I think this this podcast franchise has, has maybe uh, celebrated it the right yeah. amount, but uh, yeah. yeah, I loved it. I saw it, I saw it uh, with a Q and a with the director too. Oh, and, cool. Um, it was uh, really neat. And she was like talking about um, the, you know, the, none of the cast was there. Cause it was still during the, the actor strike. Right. Right. But talked about how they, they had to struggle to get the tone right. And it was a really tough mm-hmm. to get the tone right for the movie. And it would make or break the movie to do that. For sure. And, uh, I was like, that's so true. And, um, but it, but it, it's, it, it lands, it hits all the notes and it's just yeah. so much fun. I love like a, like a fun, clever, original kind of thing like that. Yeah. It's it to me. And they're very, they're vastly different movies, but to me, I got a very like scary movie vibe from it. It's like, mm, like, I haven't heard anyone <sighs> say that. That's good. I like that. Like, yeah. Yeah. Just with the absurdity of it. And like I, the first couple of scary movies, like when I was, I was young and hit at the right time. And so those were really funny to me. And I just kind of got that vibe throughout where it's like the absurdity and, mm. you know, you kind of just go with the flow and, and it might be silly, but it's, it's fun. And, and I think Anderson, Brian really set me up. Well, Brian or Anderson, I mean, really set me up to love it even more. So, yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, I was I was so happy to hear them celebrate that, too. That's like what yeah. I was saying. It's like, does this culture align with these two guys? Yeah, yeah. And they totally got it and loved yeah. it. And um, I was, you know, happy to see that. So the director of Bottom, she directed something else, right? She did Ship a Baby. Ship was a it, Baby. Was that yes. her? Yes, 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 yes at you're least right. The, the, the actor in it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was um, trying to think of um, I was trying to think of what she did before because I knew it was something big, so. I, uh, yeah. So thank you. My brain they, is. Everyone uh, in that movie is gonna go on to be like a huge star. I it hope feels so. like it feels like we're gonna look back at this and like we do it like super bad or or Mean Dazed Girls. Con- yeah, or Dazed and Confused or something yeah. like that. Where it's like, whoa, everyone yeah. was in this movie. So yeah, no, you're I'm right. Really, really happy for that uh, casting. Yeah, group. I agree. Well, what drew you to the top five? Um. I I wanted to pick something kind of expansive so that we could talk about different things and mm-hmm. ideally like really good movies. So that yeah. kind of did it. Um, and we were originally like I had put out a call for people to um, help me with some horror topics because I wanted to do something around Halloween. And then um, I had a buddy, Joseph Bridges, he came on and then and then now it's past Halloween. So we were going to do one word titles like that were all just like horror Right. Mm-hmm. And so now we've kind of changed it. I, my, I still have a good yeah. amount of horror on my list. It feels like I listened to that um, podcast, by the way. With, did um, you? OK. Yeah, I listened to it and um, very, very entertaining. Thank uh, you. Interesting to consider how mentally ill characters have evolved over the years, because yeah. it's a topic we kind of take seriously now. And yeah, at a time it was just like. Those people are crazy. That yeah. guy's insane, you know, like, like when yeah, he, exactly. uh, Joseph was talking about Invisible Man and how yeah. that was kind of perceived, which is a great movie, too. So yeah, I, I like the I, range. I haven't seen uh, Invisible Man, but after that, I, when I went to go looking for the clip, uh, went looking for the clip online, I was I watched a bunch of clips and I'm like, wow, I need to see this. This is this is like mm-hmm. actually a, this is powerful. And like watching him 
Yeah, I, I, I'm excited to watch that soon. But uh, yeah, with Claude yeah. Rains as the titular Invisible Man, <laughs> he uh, that guy that guy comes from like a dr- really dramatic stage background. Oh, you know, okay. kind of acting that you know truly doesn't exist now, but he was sort of grandfathered, like from uh, if I'm if I'm referring saying that right. Yeah, you know, oh, I love loved it. He's he's very pronounced in his like movements, and I could tell and he's pronounced in his voice too like the way very, he very he much. like yeah so i i could tell i was watching like the unraveling scene in front of the cops and stuff and the way he's like you want to know who i am and he's like i don't know it was just really interesting and compelling and i'm watching the scene and i'm like god i gotta watch this now i but i have i had a podcast to edit so <laughs> yeah well it, it, the movie's always going to be there exactly um so the topic was originally done January 25th, 2013. Mm. So almost 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah. Or actually, yeah. Yeah. Over 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, and what was your criteria? Because I definitely kept adding criteria as I was searching my mind. Well, you know what? I'm glad you you asked that because I was unsure myself. And one mm-hmm. thing I did was um I made a little bit of a longer list depending how the criteria plays out. So here, okay. here let, let me ask, let me pose it back to you. Yeah. Is one, I assume I debated if, if the counted and then I kind of said it, it didn't because that would include a million more movies. Yes. So you said, you said it doesn't count. I, I thought it didn't count, but you could talk me into it. No, no. I know those, no ands, no okay. as. Like okay. I was just, it's just one word. So, um, so, but Hey, you do, you do you, we, I don't know if we should have talked about it, but whatever. And then the other qualification I had was if the movie is known by no, multiple titles, oh. maybe in different countries. Okay. Are we taking the English title, the original English title or the original title of the movie? Because because oh, there's I some never... I found that 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 go one way or the other on that. My number one I know has a lengthy title in other countries. Hmm. Hmm. Oh so well. I, I kind of ended up saying that as long as one of them works, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. You can you can pick one or the other. To really pare it down, I also um went with movies that don't sound like two words so whereas mm. like i a boyhood for example oh, like okay it's one word technically but it just feels like two words you know okay yeah and i know that's such a weird qualifier but i was like i had a couple and i'm like no you know what i'm gonna like just like one word <laughs> i don't know and and um it's fine if you do this. Another qualifier. I just kept giving myself qualifiers and I don't know why because I think my list was like this big. Yeah. And same, same. so I uh no names. I went with no people's names. Okay. I no. if I I could I could make that work. I might well, no, I have you, a couple. You, you uh you do your All list right. and, and I'll do mine. That's totally okay. that's totally cool. I um I just was I I had a name on there actually and then I took it off and then I put it back on um but I know it's definitely going to be I saw it was recommended in our listener list so mm. um yeah um do you want to go first or do you want me to go first uh how how would you you go first okay sure so yeah exciting okay gosh this is so weird because I could have just done my five favorite movies with one word titles but I I went with ones that were, I like the title and Mm -hmm. this number five is very personal for me, but um, the other ones where it's like that movie is synonymous with that title, like, or that, or they used that title and now it's like, oh yeah, that is that. I'll explain as we go through my list. Okay. Um, So my number five is Lamb. Uh, from 2021, I, I don't know if you, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Movie. Oh, you, you have seen it. Um, I have seen it. I watched this with my partner and we just both kind of fell in love with it. 
mm -hmm. uh, very much. And uh, it's a horror film. I use that in quotations because it is um, like, it's not scary, but it's it's definitely has that feeling of dread. Mm. There's some really interesting things that go on. Um, it's unsettling. It's unsettling. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's it's um, oh, what's her name? Um, Numi Rap Rapace Rapace. Mm -hmm. um, I love her, and uh, the rest of the cast is is very Swedish because this is a Swedish or Iceland Sweden movie. Yeah. Something like that. Like Nordic, uh, Nordic yeah. type of thing. Maybe. And it's so beautiful looking. And uh, I just, I fell in love with this movie. Um, and it's one that I kept thinking about. And so, yeah. So my number five is Lamb. Uh, like every time I hear the word Lamb, I think about that movie now. And uh, yeah. So, and, and oh. did you like this movie? I, uh, I didn't like it enough to put it on my list, but right. I'll say I, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. the, the ending was particularly memorable. And yes. uh, I don't think we can spoil that here, but no, the ending is really what stuck with me from that because the rest of the movie has a certain tone to it. Mm -hmm. And the ending happens and sort of is like, well, now that's the most memorable thing. you saw. <laughs> yes. The ending is, um, I don't know, a little out there, but um fun <laughs> let's no, say I, I i get it i i see what yeah. you're doing i think that movie to me is the most a 24 y movie yeah. that i've ever seen yeah definitely and it is just it, it epitomizes every like weird thing that they like to do but in like yeah. a very stylized uh nicely presented kind of way i would say that until they made bo's afraid but uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a different vibe well now they're doing like big budget explosion movies aren't they like i thought i read something about that yeah well we'll see how how that turns out i mean apparently they really tried to put a bid in to buy the halloween franchise um but that mm -hmm. fell through and miramax bought it um to continue that uh so i don't know we'll see what what road they go down uh, like maybe it'll be an action movie with an a24 e style or twist but like apparently they want to make money i don't know why you would want to do that but yeah what good what does that do for you what yeah exactly <laughs> um no but i i really like a24 i'm very happy Me that too. they they've made some of my favorite movies so yes um more do whatever whatever they think is right like they know better than me so no exactly like them. um uh, so you're number five inspired pick with lamb i like that um thank you my number five is a movie from 1984 okay and it's directed by milos foreman stars f murray abraham and tom hules amadeus <laughs> and this this is a name because if you don't know who amadeus is this is referring to wolfgang amadeus mozart mm -hmm. um it's a very long movie um it, it nearly clock it nearly hits three hours mm -hmm. but um is one of those movies where i when i sat down to watch it i didn't even realize how good it was until i was like two and a half hours in and i was like i haven't moved an inch i and i'm ready for another five hours of this That's i'm awesome. totally hooked in and uh it's it's just so well put together the competing personalities and careers of of f murray abraham's character as um salieri and um mozart yeah and how uh, uh salieri tries so hard to make music good like he he loves music so much and he like does everything in his power mm -hmm. to make good music and mozart's just a fucking genius and it's just like yeah no, 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 i make perfect music yeah should i do it right now <laughs> that was perfect what and it and it frustrates him to no end so they're there his envy but also salieri loves music so much and he can't deny mozart's genius so part of him loves, loves mozart because it's like oh him. it's so good but mm -hmm. i hate you because you're my you're my nemesis and, and yeah. you're contemporary and and we're, we're kind of rivals um and it might be the best use of a soundtrack i've ever seen in a movie ever yeah because of the way it uses Mozart's pieces to reflect and show what was inside his mind and in the real world and how they jump in between him 
thinking the music and then it, it being out there and it going from his piano to the uh the, the whole arena or the, whatever the stadium whatever they called it back in back in the day yeah and um i i was just captivated by this movie i thought it was so well made so well acted really thoughtful entertaining and just like a pleasure to watch one of the best best movies yeah. i've ever seen f murray abraham doesn't get enough meaty roles like that uh, like like he's great um he's one of my favorite actors i love him this, in, uh the grand budapest hotel yeah yeah that's true yeah he was great in that i think maybe that's the last wes anderson movie that i actually really loved oh yeah i think i think well, i'm a big uh a big wes anderson guy yeah 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 i kind of kind of eat up everything he does I'll be is honest. asteroid city in your top 10 like i mean asteroid. top 10 of this year it did not make the t- top 10 of this year but i really enjoyed asteroid city um, okay. I and the French Dispatch, both of those. I, I, right. lo- I what I love. Well, this is just an aside because I don't, I don't know if Wes Anderson even has a one word title movie. I, oh no, he does, but it's not on my list. Um, I'm trying to think of he, it. Like, how many how many directors are there? Bottle Rocket. Is that or one is, word? Is that, or is that or is that two words? I thought Bottle Rocket. I don't know. Word. All right, we'll fact check that one. I will. I'll do that while um, you talk. But uh, he's. How many directors are there that everybody can like pick out their style a mile away? And there's, mm-hmm. you know, trends on Instagram and TikTok just uh, uh, parodying his style. Yeah. Like it's, it's this thing he's carved out that's all his own. That's like, that looks like a Wes Anderson movie. Yeah. And although you and me watch a lot of movies and could probably pick out a, a David Fincher movie or, a, you know, a Bong Joon Ho movie or whatever, like maybe yeah. you could pick out something about that. But, uh, with Wes Anderson, I think you're anybody is like, oh, that's that must be a Wes Anderson movie. Yeah, that looks like so. Yeah, I, I I really respect and admire him for that. Yeah, story wise, like you can definitely pick out like stuff from Spielberg stuff with his you know parent stuff and or like right. the lens flares, just little things, right? But with Wes right. Anderson, it's like no, this is clearly a Wes Anderson, and now yeah. it's cool seeing movies coming out that use some of his like style you know and and make it their own and 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 i'm all for that you know um yeah and bottle rocket is two words <laughs> uh, i i saw that but but rush rushmore would have worked yeah true rushmore, true which I, I really like rushmore yeah oh and uh amadeus um, just came up like two episodes ago i think on top five biopics so Okay. Um, I have been hearing a lot about Amadeus, which I have not seen. Um, oh. I know, I know, it's uh, terrible. I not yet, not yet, not yet. I will see it, and that's that's the thing about I like about like movie lovers of today. It's like we're we're more. Oh, you haven't seen that yet? Well, that's great. You get to watch that now. Like I'm so yeah. I'm lucky. I'm happy for you. That's so exciting. Yep, um, it's there for you when you want it. Whereas Anderson wants to kick you out of the room if you haven't seen it. <laughs> I know. You know, there are movies that will. I try so hard not to do that with people when somebody says, oh, yeah. I haven't seen blah, blah, blah. I, yeah. I, because you know that person's probably got a bunch of times in their life. The, it's like <laughs> that, that you, I don't want to contribute to that. I'm, I'm like, yeah. Maybe you haven't seen The Dark Knight. Maybe yeah. you haven't seen Citizen Kane or The Godfather, or whatever. That's fine. Yeah. That's there's, fine. There's more, to, there's more to life, but you should see it one day. Yeah. And as, but it's especially hard when the person, you know, the person would love the movie and you're like, uh, yeah. you haven't seen that. Like, and then like mm. you talk to them a year later and they still haven't seen it. And you're like, why? That does frustrate me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know that feeling. Um, so number four is yeah. a love for my childhood. Um, and it just kind of became synonymous around my house, kind of like one of the first horror movies. Um, and I use that in quotes again. Um, but this is 1990, came of the year I was born. Hmm? Uh, Tremors. What's that? Oh, that's, that was the year I was born, too. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. 33? What, what, mm-hmm. what month? August. April. Okay. Okay. So yeah, so Tremors, uh, 1990 American mm. monster, fun movie, very fun, high on the fun scale, very high. Um, Kevin Bacon, Fred Ward, rest in peace. Um, you know, just so much fun. I literally have the 
uh, seven movie collection in my, you know, like I've seen, I've seen all seven. seven. I've oh yeah, seen it's the first one. Wow. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. I don't recommend any of them, but I was just such a fan. Um, I'm a big Reba McIntyre fan too. Um, but <laughs> yeah, like I'm that. a little weird, but that's okay. No, um, I, I like Reba McIntyre. I I, just, I've, I I definitely watched an episode of her show at a point. That would be like I when I was home sick from school, yeah. like I would be watching Reba for some reason. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. She's something's enticing. She's a queen. Um. But yeah, so Tremors, I just think that title Tremors is just like, Mm -hmm. you know, they they could have gone with anything like, like anything like Snake Monster or blah, blah. blah. But I think like the title gave the movie a little bit more oomph and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a little more class. Um, Like, I think people took it a little more seriously because it wasn't like or something like it came from beneath or blah blah blah. Yeah. it's just tremors and uh and so i loved it i love i love that title uh if you haven't seen tremors i i tried to show it to some people i've tried to show it and they just hate it um mm-hmm. uh it's definitely kind of cheesy b movie ish so yeah, but it knows what it is like that's what 100 percent. that's what i think makes it work is it, yeah. is it plays into that and it yeah. knows what it is and uh the per- Kevin Bacon kind of carries it too. He's really good. Definitely, he is very good. So yeah, so Tremors. That is my number four. Let me, um, let me ask you, what did what did Tremors two through seven explore? <laughs> so in two, um, they have learned to walk on land. Okay. <laughs> and then th- and then in three, they've learned to fly. Um, so anyways and then <laughs> yeah but <laughs> after seems logical yeah after two it's just uh burt gummer played by uh uh what's his name? michael gross uh he's in all of them every single one uh and it's basically just him going to different places and fighting tremors and stuff after that but two and three aren't terrible um fred ward's in the second one so okay. um but yeah I mean, if you were really bored, let's okay, say maybe go to two, but, but yeah, maybe uh, maybe past. throw on two, but okay. yeah. So <laughs> I got uh, learned a little bit more about the Tremors franchise. I yeah, mean, yeah, I know you didn't even know it was a franchise. I mean, most people probably don't, but uh, yeah, I'm in a Tremors Facebook group, but just because I join, so oh, okay. I join anytime I love a, like a franchise or something, I just join so I can. You know, I get that. Yeah, I'm I, I'm like that with like some movies too. So I don't know. Yeah, that feeling. Um, so four. So my number four yeah. is my only pick from the 21st century. I'm I'm hoping okay. that I don't come off too pretentious with my 20th century picks. Totally, like, you totally are. Yeah, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. Tra- I'm joking. Trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. But uh, it's a movie from 2001, and this is a uh, a French film. It's called Oh Amelie. Oh Amelie. And Amelie has a longer French title, but we're saying the American title is just Amelie. And we're, we're going to run with that starring Audrey Tuteau mm-hmm. as the titular <laughs> Amelie. Uh, I love this movie so much. Uh, it does so many things right. It's the it, it's such a wholesome, well-meaning movie. If you don't mm-hmm. know the story, Amelie is basically this, this young woman who is tricking or almost pranking people in a way but Mm -hmm. for a good cause like she secretly wants to make people happy but doesn't want any credit for it Mm -hmm. you know maybe it's putting something nostalgic in front of somebody in a secret manner and then they find it and remember their childhood or whatever or getting somebody the the food they needed or what have you and uh she's she's kind of like a guardian angel and uh It's it's a beautiful thing to just watch somebody who is so and it's because she kind of has some sadness herself, you know, Mm -hmm. and I think some I know we know people who can relate to this is, you know, if some sad people take that out as being very positive outward and uh, that's what she does. And 
you know, eventually maybe, maybe I don't want to spoil too much, but maybe her own kind of romance develops and uh, that becomes its own story in itself. Just, it's so charming and, and yeah, lovely. And it looks so good. good. It's this beautiful like color palette to it. I uh, directed by Jean-Pierre Junet, who I've Mm. watched. uh, I tried to watch some of his other movies. He made like alien four and, that's how Deli- I know the name. And Delicatessen, which is Delicatessen's underrated. And I could have ended up on my list, but Amelie's uh, the superior film. So just a oh. lovely, feel good, beautiful movie. Uh, I think this kind of gets underrated. I, I think this is like one of the best movies I've ever seen, but I don't hear it kind of discussed as that. So uh, lovely, accidental positivity that she. Uh, you know, blows on to people. I think it's a movie when you bring it up, though, like yeah. everybody's like, yeah, yeah, that's a great movie. We all love it, but it doesn't get brought up enough. It doesn't, it doesn't get its due, I guess is what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, I can't accept it because it's in French. It's called Le Flab Fablo Destin de Amel, Emile <laughs> Poulon. Yeah, well, no, I'm just, and I'm playing, uh, I'm, I'm pushing... totally joking. Okay, good. I was pushing I, the boundaries, though. I wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, I I wouldn't even have thought of that except for when you brought it up earlier. I was like, I'm thinking about my number one, which has a different title. But there was another movie I wanted on my list, and maybe we'll go over it later. But it was mm-hmm. two words in English, but one word in its original language. So mm. thought about squeezing it in there, but didn't. That would have been like a Brian clever pick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I decided like oh, that's not really you don't call it that, Mike. Mike, you never refer to it. <laughs> yeah, if you yeah. referred it to that like all the time, I'd be like, well, then yeah, that's what you call it. But we don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So, yeah, that's my number four. Perfect. So my number three. Uh, all mine are some of mine are very recent, but 2021's pig. Ooh. With Nicolas Cage. Is this uh, his second animal as a title? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Second animal is the title. Um yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, so pig, I you know, I'm like, I think everybody laughed at the title, like, and it's just that the poster is just Nicolas Cage looking at you menacingly. And uh this is possibly my favorite cage role um, ever. I know. Well, I mean, he's very subdued and I just, it kind of blew me away that he could do that. Um, I dug it in that way. Um, obviously I, I do like his, you know, like vampires kiss and his, his craziness. Right. Mm-hmm. But face off. Um, face off. I, I love that. Yeah. That's probably, I, I, I would say that's one of my favorites. Like, but I don't know. I was just really, oh, I am so sorry. Um, yawned. That's uh, so unprofessional. Um, but yeah, so pig, uh, he is a man. It's, it's, um, a little John wick, like the a 24 version of John wick, Mm -hmm. um, in some ways almost. Uh, but yeah, it is, uh, it's, it's this man and he has this prize winning pig that can find truffles better than any pig he's ever had and that's where he makes most of his money he just lives out in the wilderness and then his pig goes missing and uh i i love this movie i love that they went with the title pig uh Mm -hmm. and so i i i'm rewarding their boldness by just going with a three-letter title uh by putting it on my list so yeah that's my uh I really I, I enjoyed Pig. Uh the scene where he's out to uh dinner and he kinda like tears down yes. the waiter. Yeah. That one still kinda lives in my head a little I bit. I agree. Uh, yeah. And you're you're right. I like that's a kind of a, that's bold, but he it is one of the better cage performances. Yeah. He's really he's really dialed in. Yeah, I just because he's usually just an ex, a big loud explosion and yeah. now, and you're right, he's very focused. So Yeah. Very I thought, focused. Uh, I like that. I like that pick. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, so you're number three, then. My, num- my number three. Again, trying not to be too uh, pretentious here, but it is a Japanese film from okay. 1962. Oh. Uh, directed by master filmmaker Masaki Kobayashi. 
the film's called Harikiri. And this is a uh, black and white samurai movie starring uh, Tatsuya Nakati. And he he basically shows up to a temple um, or maybe not a temple, but a dojo or whatever it is. Sorry if I don't have the, the right term here. Mm-hmm. And he's like, uh, yeah, I just want to commit Harikiri here or seppuku, seppuku if it's that's the other one the other title it's known as i want to i want to kill myself honorably is what he yeah says. i just when i typed it in it like it comes up with what a definition of that her- harakari means which is ritual suicide by disembowelment practiced by the japanese samurai or formally decreed by a court so i and, did not know that oh yeah so and it takes place you know way back when uh um, yeah so it's, okay it's, it's in you know I don't, I don't know what time period I don't want to say, but, uh, you know, far before the the year it came out. Yeah. And I don't want to spoil the movie because you really got to see this again. This is one of the best movies ever made. It looks immaculate, like one of the most perfectly crafted films I've ever seen. Right just down. every frame that you see in this movie is just so perfect. You feel like Da Vinci, like, you know, fine tuned it himself. Yeah. In every frame and then the movement of the camera is it just could not be more perfect and thoughtful and uh the story kind of deals with the concept of, of honor and and how we kind of overlook flaws in the system and who writes history and uh it, the, these themes are really you know kept going in my head months years because i saw it years ago now yeah. after after i saw it and uh, you know maybe certain elements of the Japanese culture I didn't get, but I got enough mm-hmm. that I that I felt this movie mm-hmm. uh, that that these themes are hit hard and they're still applicable today. That's it's, awesome. It's masterful filmmaking. This is just just a a perfect film, quite, huh. quite frankly. I don't want to, and I don't even want to spoil what happens because even if you overlook everything I said and you just watch it, being like, what is this guy up to? Like even that. I think it's still very compelling. So, and then there's some, there's some good action uh, too. So it, it hits a lot of notes. It hits a lot of notes very effectively. Yeah. I wrote it down. I got, I, I got to watch this. Um, Spectacular film. Took place in 1630. There you go. There you go. And it was, and it was at least a hundred years. That's, that's uh, yeah, that's a long time ago. (laughs) Um, That's no, I'm, I, uh, there's a lot of Japanese cinema that I definitely need to catch up on. Mm -hmm. Um, and I recognize the, uh, director's name. So yeah, uh, he made another movie. Akiru. Yep. No, he, no, uh, that would be, um, no, Akira Kurosawa. This is another, uh, he made a movie called, uh, Qual, Qualdon, which is like the kind of a famous Japanese horror movie. It's a little hard to explain, but. And he made okay. the Human Condition trilogy and yeah. some other samurai movies, but this is the Hari Kiri's his crowning achievement. And, okay, um, I would say, but I, I haven't seen his whole filmography, so I can't. Huh. Maybe, maybe well, something else is better. I don't know. You uh, you just educated me. That's oh, awesome. You know, that's I'm, awesome. I'm passionate about this film. I love it <laughs> so much. That's good. I I love that. I and uh, hopefully. It, it will get more people to 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 watch this uh, masterpiece. I hope so. Um, I hope so. My number one and two, I think, are obvious choices. I, I I don't know if I regret them now, but that's fine. I don't care. Keep it um, real. Yeah, I sometimes you just got to go with the obvious choices, and I on most of the podcasts so far, like this is like my twentieth episode, or I think, or something like that. Yeah, I have tried to not go obvious and mm-hmm. and then this one I did. So I'm glad your list is like wide varying and uh very more uh intelligent than mine and very more. Oh my god. Um mine is 19 my number 2 is 1975's Jaws. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how I didn't I actually didn't that one didn't cross my mind. Jaws yeah. is great. Jaws is great though. I don't want to take away from it. Oh yeah, no, I mean like what can I say about Jaws? Everybody knows what Jaws is. I wish I had like more 
information of, on where he would have got the title. I know it's based on a book by Peter Benchley, so obviously he already had that, uh, you know, uh, in his, he had that title for him, but it just, it works so well, and it is synonymous with, you know, sharks and, and everything now, like Jaws, but yeah, I I think it's just a perfect title, and uh, it I is, had it's a strong title. Like, it, yeah, it invokes it invokes fear. Just because yeah. you you know it's about a shark, and you think about if there's anything that's scary about a shark, it's the shark's jaws. Like, yeah, those are terrifying to to think about. But with everything like about a shark, or like you know, and we've had a million shark movies, right? And it's like you know, shark attack or shark this, like, like could have been named a million different things. Like these different movies have, have come up with. And I think, you know, Peter Benchley and then Steven Spielberg using it. I think, uh, I think it's just a perfect name for a movie. So really, is. um, yeah, especially for this movie. And, and then, right. It's one of the first big blockbusters. So, um, yeah. I somehow hadn't seen Jaws until, a year or two ago, I saw mm-hmm. the IMAX re-release and I actually wrote in as a fan fiction and I think it, it got selected. So thank you for uh, <laughs> letting that one, that one get through the cracks. But, I, uh, yeah, such a good movie really yeah. like holds up anytime, yeah. anywhere. It's I, I remember movies. this is one that I loved on a rewatch. Like when I first watched it, I was like, I don't know. I don't get the hype. And then I rewatched it and I'm, I just thought this is like a, perfect movie you know I, I love it to me it was just perfect so um and then i tried to watch the sequels and i quit halfway through so I haven't attempted that yet yeah i thought two was still good um does it retain the cast anyone yes um schrider is back okay well, you got that that, that, I mean, that, Sorry. that counts for that counts for something yeah, Schrider's back and like his wife is back and I think it's it's I kind of liked it because uh like Martin like the sheriff Martin Brody he's like he's trying to come to terms with everything that happened and I just I kind of liked his journey in the movie uh even though like the movie couldn't deliver like maybe some of the scares or the shark stuff I uh yeah but anyways yeah happened your yeah, exactly. So you're number two. My number two. You know, uh, I felt similarly with you, where it's like, uh, it's a little obvious. Mm-hmm. It's too obvious to go with, but mm-hmm. I got to go with it because I really do love this movie. Uh, again, 20th century pick from 1942. Casablanca. The classic of classics. Mm-hmm. The classic of classics. Yes. And a starring, great title. Great title. Starring Humphrey Bogart as Rick Blaine. And mm-hmm. co-starring Ingrid Bergman, and along with Claude Rains, who was the Invisible Man. Oh yeah, and uh, Peter Lorre and others uh, show up in this. But but it, Bogey is really the 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 ticket here. I think mm-hmm. he is Bogart's so good in this role. It's one of the best performances I've ever seen in any movie ever. Mm-hmm. Just ha- have you seen the the film? No, I don't. I don't want to spoil too much, but okay, uh, it, because it really is worth seeing. But he runs this cafe in Casablanca, which, mm-hmm. uh, you know, this is 1942 and he's kind of been pained in his past by romance and other things. And it's kind of just has this cold indifference to the world, yeah, which is sort of a um, an allegory for the United States indifference to World War Two, because at the point this movie is being made, they hadn't entered the war. You're right. Yeah. And. He just not doesn't care. You know, his, his bar is kind of a place that like you could be anybody and come in and it's fine. We accept all, you know, if you're a Nazi, if you're American, whatever, like, I don't care. I just, yeah. this is my bar. Don't shoot up the place. Like, <laughs> stay and I trouble. need the money. And, uh, and then the, the, you know, the love of his life uh, walks back into the bar, Ingrid Bergman. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that famous line, he's like, of all the gin joints in all the world, she walks into mine. And he delivers it with such just 
pain, painful nostalgia of, of yeah. what had happened. And now it's being evoked yeah. out of him again. And so the whole movie is sort of an allegory for the United States being awoken or they should awaken and get to join World War II. I but didn't know a, that. As a film, or that's my interpretation, at least. Yeah, um, yeah. I, well, that's that I've and I'm pretty I read that somewhere. I don't think I came up with that on my own, but I read it and it made sense to me. We'll so say I'm you did. We'll it. say you did. Thank you. Thank you, Mitch. Yeah. Uh, you're so smart. This uh but 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 beyond that, it's just really a super well executed, great story. It's really exciting. So many memorable classic lines. Uh here's looking at you, kid. You know, I could go on with just the isn't this lines. the one where it's like, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. That's gone with the wind. But uh, I have seen that and I should have known that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, the Gone, Gone with the Wind is uh, m- many words. But uh, <laughs> in more ways right. than one. I haven't yeah. seen it. I haven't seen it. That's like four hours. It seems. I, I didn't love it, to be completely yeah. honest. But uh, yeah. Moving, moving down my watch list. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to see Casablanca. It's so one good. that like, I I remember I my one of my friends was burning me movies and I'm like, can you burn me Casablanca? I got to see it. And this was like a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't torrent. I don't do that anymore. Please don't murder. Uh, put me in jail. Um, and then I, I own it on DVD and I still just haven't gotten around to it. And uh, yeah, it's on max now too. In case okay. you want that high definition, but um, perfect. Just the, the, yeah, the cinematography and the greatest performance I've ever seen. Like, so and the thing is, even though I think this was mostly on sound stages, the atmosphere and just the world building, like Casablanca feels so lived in. Mm-hmm. I could have sworn that this was filmed in Casablanca. And, and I think it was I think it was on sound stages. So um, really powerful movie. I, I think it totally lives up to the hype. Just just fantastic. Casablanca. I believe it. My, and then the director, Michael Curtis. What else has he done? I'm trying to is he look here. Him? Because he was, an, it looks like he was an actor too. He he never came close to making something on the level of Casablanca again. He made no. Robin Hood from '38 and White Christmas. Huh. White Christmas, which has one of the most racist scenes I've seen in a movie that I watched in my adult lifetime. I've seen that movie, but it was like so long ago because my mm-hmm. uncle loved it or something. Huh. Um, yeah, but a well, director of the time. Yeah, I I don't know if it was him or what or who made this movie so great, but it evidently, mm-hmm. evidently it is. I gotta see it. Yeah, I know. I'm a disappointment. I am a shame to uh, all it's, movie. It's just a not. It's a not yet. It's a not yet. It's a not yet. Um, my number one. Uh, it was gonna be different. My whole list was gonna be different, and uh, I kept not putting this one on. And because it is my favorite movie of all time. And uh, it's a one more title. And I'm like, well, I guess I should just put it on the fucking list because it's my favorite movie of all time. And it's a one word title. And that is Alien. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I'm a sucker for this movie. I <laughs> I watch it like, you know, several times a year. I just I love everything about it. It's a near perfect movie for me. Um, yeah, favorite movie of all time, uh, without a doubt. Uh, and yeah, I mean, so many movies today probably hate that uh, Mr. Ridley Scott named the movie Alien um, because, you know, nothing, yeah. no title about aliens can just movie about aliens can use a title Um, with the word alien in it and not be seen as he monopolized it yeah exactly even when yeah like even when he made his uh you know he wanted to make the next alien movies in his later career like he went with prometheus instead because he didn't Mm -hmm. want to you know and and people complained so he put it in his next movie alien covenant but um yeah, I don't think I've put this on a list yet. So your list has dragged it out of me. Uh, I've been holding very, off very because because <laughs> I don't I you know I don't want to like be like Brian with his like Manchurian Candidate or you mm-hmm. know Mich- Michelle and Romy's high 
high school reunion or whatever that movie is what is it called i don't know yeah, but yeah one. no me neither um so i don't know what else i can say about alien and then i could have gone with aliens because to just add an s i think is just such a smart a yeah. smart thing and uh and then even alien three like the way he with the way fincher put the little three up in the corner stupid but kind of cool cubed. yeah 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 exactly uh so you know 1970 horror science fiction movie ridley scott directed dan o'bannon written what else can i say sigourney weaver mm. love of my love of my life this movie and and her oh, yeah masterful filmmaking like so yes. so slick so I, scary yeah uh the 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 practical effects are like Ugh. that's that's a textbook it's quite yeah. literally like if you want to do practical effects watch alien yeah and see how they did it i because, uh, yeah for my birthday last year i got my mom doesn't like horror movies okay. um but for my birthday last year i had i just wanted to watch alien on our projector on like the big screen and and everything so i had people over we had like popcorn and everything we just watched alien <laughs> that's all i wanted to do for my birthday and my mom sat down and watched it and i have a video of her reacting oh. to the scene yeah um I know. so uh yeah <laughs> so no and and i even have um my aunt or someone told me that my grandma and grandpa went to go see it when it first came out in 79 and and they were older and Ooh. she remembers them coming home and she's like and my grandma like Oh, it was just awful. There was things coming out of people and it was just awful. And <laughs> so, yeah, all these years later, I'm, I'm in love with it. So my, my mom talks that way about another movie that's not on my list, but could have been Psycho. Yeah. That she saw that back, which I think is amazing. I watched yeah, me too. this movie. So good. But yeah. she is like traumatized by it because she saw it when she was too young and yeah. scared the bejeebers out of her. <laughs> that was almost on my list. I, I, I think it's a I think that's a perfect title for a movie. So yeah, those are, uh, those are all on the outskirts of my list. Yeah. Alien yeah. and aliens. Great. Yeah. Great pick. I love that. Such a good yeah. movie. Uh, uh, I mean, I my, you've you're definitely smarter than me and, and more no, fil- you no look cool. like you've gone to film school compared to my <laughs> list, but uh I, I can't wait for your number one. Um, I, I just want to say my, my, la- my other favorite thing about alien I always think about is that, uh, Rid- Ridley Scott wrote the movie too, right? Is that uh, right? Dan O'Bannon did. Dan O'Bannon. Uh, he, I don't think he had really Scott had any help. It didn't write it. I don't think he wrote it at all. Okay. I could be, the, I could be so wrong. I was going to mispronounce, mistell this story, but my, my understanding is that the writer of the movie, Dan O'Brien, Dan O'Bannon, uh, Dan O'Bannon, Bannon. Yeah. yeah Bannon. Uh, wrote the movie with no genders to the characters so that yeah. their sex could play either either character and you end up with a woman playing the main character but yeah. that doesn't matter that wasn't the point we're not trying to empower women it's like the woman is just the protagonist exactly like, so i think that was actually woke before everybody woke up you know so well and uh the character of lambert um is canonically i don't know if People who don't know that word, but she is transgender. Um, she was a male before she was. She's the one who was played by Veronica Cartwright. And um, because in Aliens, um, there's a I'm getting way into the weeds. I'm sorry. But I'm there's a scene where uh, Ripley is having to retell what happened to the courtroom, not the courtroom, but the meeting. And it's flashing screens of the people from the first movie that died and and all this stuff and when hers come up like if you they zoomed in and read it and it says that like you know uh lambert um you know born male uh had surgery at a certain age and you know is now female like you know so i know that's really that's super progressive for that time. yeah like wow that's impressive just a little detail that like probably no one picked up on until like the last 10 years or whatever right but um just something cool that i i i noticed um yeah so that's cool yeah cool to know 
and I didn't. I did know that about the. Oh, well, not trying to say like, oh, I knew that, <laughs> but well, I did fa- know you, that. You, you probably know all the, the facts. <laughs> I, I know just like one or two. So yeah, and I've only seen yeah. it once actually. I've only seen Alien once. But it was it was Ridley Scott, like you say, like yeah, Dan O'Bannon wrote it, but it was also Ridley Scott who made the choice to have mm. uh, Sigourney Weaver as Ripley. And okay, so it's and a right, a... so um, I think. You know, I think it does have to go to him mostly because, uh, but yeah, so no, uh, Alien, I could talk about it all night, but uh, <laughs> your number one phenomenal movie. Uh, my number one, again, try not to come off as pretentious, and I think it's <laughs> you've said that every time now. I know it feels it's like okay, it happens more and more each time because my next, my final film, and my number one film is a silent film, it's a mm. silent film from 1927. And it's a German okay. film, although nobody's speaking any languages. It's silent, so right. it happens to be German. From master filmmaker Fritz Lang, who uh, you might know did M or The Big Heat. Mm-hmm. Uh, the film is called Metropolis. And it's two and a half hours. Oh. Uh, it tells the story of a futuristic city where working class people and the elites are are at odds basically and um i won't i won't spoil it too much but it you know it it basically follows this guy who's sort of an entitled upper class you know very high level person and he kind of gets the idea that like wait a minute maybe the working class people should be treated well too and that's kind of a lot of the story but it also has to do with this you know, robot that uh, this guy's building. And, uh, you know, it has, what's really amazing about this movie is if you look at any screenshots from it, you would not believe this movie was made in 1927. The scope and scale of this is staggering. It is more impressive than many movies made today. The Nobody had ever thought to do anything in this type of huge scale before. These cities... Not only do they do you believe them, but they're just so they're, they're so realized and, and so thoughtfully put out. Like there, there has an artistic vision to it that's sort of its own. It mm-hmm. doesn't feel like it's it's copying, you know, any style. It's like that's the future. So you know, and, and always funny to watch a movie about the future that came out a hundred years ago because <laughs> You know, it has some funny, but I, I seem to remember they don't say the year. Maybe they. I was do just looking to see if they have I, the year here. I think they don't say the year, yeah. um, but uh, it you know it 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 flies by for being this, and it's just the use of these the images you see, uh, the the, yeah. the music and the emotions on the characters. I think some of these actors had never, you know, acted before. Some of them had acted, but. Uh, just what Fritz Lang is able to get out of them is so mm-hmm. expressive, moved me uh, emotionally. And what I thought was so brilliant about it is that if you watch this movie and then you read reviews, you will find two different types of reviews. You'll find one people that that look at this as like, oh, this is um, anti-capitalist or this is capitalist or this is communist or this is anti-communist or yeah uh this is fascist or this is the exact opposite of fascism so yeah nobody can exactly agree on the political message of the movie which i actually think is what makes it so brilliant because yeah. all it really says at the end of the day and that, you know without spoiling it is that the working class and the elites kind of have to come together for things yeah. to work out which is easier said than done the movie doesn't offer a real solution because i don't think anybody has a real solution yeah but it it shows that that's kind of like what we what we need from humanity so i thought that was super profound and yeah. just a monumental achievement in filmmaking so i have to give it the respect for the history but then it's also just like jaw-droppingly amazing like throughout just yeah. an incredible vision you have a way of selling a movie. Thank you. <laughs> you I have sold it. me on like three of these movies that I feel like I need to just drop everything and watch right now. Oh, uh, and this good. poster even looks ahead of its time. You know, I, mm-hmm. I want this poster on my wall. It's beautiful. 
Yeah, um, I feel like you've like the image. There's like this main image you see of the uh, the robot that they build. Mm-hmm. That I think it always shows up in like whenever you see like a a montage of filmmaking history. Yeah, so yeah. You get this image of this this robot from the movie, and um, yeah, it, it's you know people overuse this word, but but iconic, iconic. Yeah. It, the Wikipedia page on this movie is longer than any Wikipedia page on a movie I've ever seen. Like, it's, it's just so like, innovative. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like history influences. Like, it's just, uh, wow. I, I, I knew about this movie, like just tangentially, tangentially. I, I know how to speak. Um, <laughs> but yeah, now it's just rocketed to the top of my list. Thank you. Oh yeah, it's it it is that good, you know. Yeah, and I I think anytime, you know, I like the way the guys on the podcast refer to this too. Sometimes like a movie feels like it's going to be homework. Yeah, and this feels like it's going to be homework. Yeah, and then you actually maybe the first ten or twenty minutes or because how often do you watch like you know movie like movies yeah. this long that are silent, but at yeah. some point it just works its spell over you, and uh, just hits hits all the notes and is just a. Uh, you know, a, a perfect cinematic experience. Yeah. Bruce Perky and I just did movies that feel like homework, but actually aren't. Oh, okay. Um, so just a... Is that um, out yet? Did I miss yeah, it? Yeah, it was uh, a uh, month or so ago, I think, okay. maybe. Let me add that to my library. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that's uh, that's your number one. That's perfect. That's I number one. Yep. I, I absolutely love that. Um. So uh, before we get into also rands, I'm just going to uh, talk about some uh, people who commented um, Great. on my post here asking for contributions. Let's hear it. Mr. Greg Suravosti from the Cinematics Podcast, he, rec- he said Mon- Monos, Vertigo, and Ed. Um, he said Ed is a baseball movie masterpiece starring Matt LeBlanc. Oh, is that where the... The, the I monkey. It's, I think it's a monkey. Is like is it? a chair for the team. Oh, I remember seeing yeah. that poster when I was young. I think He's... it's part of the Airbud universe, maybe, or it's at least it's. Oh my gosh, pick. that's a very funny pick. Uh, um, and I thought about Vertigo. Vertigo crossed my mind. Yeah, I know Vertigo did. Rope did. Um, so David Wangberg, uh, Collateral, Collateral, Dune, uh, Everest, Badlands, Train Spotting. Joseph Bridges, who has seen every movie known to man. Collateral goes hard. Cloud, yeah. Um, Zodiac, Casablanca, Psycho. Mm-hmm. So they're uh, Jaws, M, Once, Memento, Misery, Tower, Rashomon, Titanic, Rafifi, Harakiri. Mm-hmm. He had that. Uh, Mother, right. Boyhood, Hausu, Amadeus, Badlands, Yojimbo, Sanjura, Doubt. Spartacus, oh, blind spotting, shoplifters, targets, money ball, brick. Holy cow! Bambi. <laughs> somebody commented. Somebody commented. Show off, and he said that's just from the for, ones from my best list. Um, Tombstone, Casino. Tombstone. Uh, oh, that's okay. That is one word. Yeah, I guess it, it wouldn't. Is. It wouldn't fit your rule though that you uh, were true. S seven n. No, seven. So, so. Um, <laughs> yeah, a lot true. of great ones. Parasite, Coraline, Moana, Heat, mm-hmm. uh, Goodfellas, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice feels like two words. Insignificance. I don't know what that is. Whiplash, Arrival, Parasite. Yeah. Casablanca came up a few times. So Frankenstein. Yeah. I think Casablanca came up like the most times. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, that one did. That one did like feel like uh, was staring me in the face. So. Yeah, I think with this one, it was the one staring staring me in the face. Um, so, what do you have any? So, what are your also like? Did you said you had like a alternate yeah. list? Yeah. Well, okay. So the the one there's two movies that I really mm-hmm. enjoy from Andre Tarkovsky. Um, mm-hmm. One is Stalker, which the guys did review on the show. I was very surprised. Who you don't remember who picked that? No, whoever, so whoever I... picked that very inspired uh, pick. But I I was very excited to hear them review it because I was like, this is a little bit off the the mm-hmm. path of the film vault, and they did not take to it. But um, I thought it was 
a brilliant profound like very moving movie like that was up there with like best movies ever made material okay it's 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 just very very slow moving very slow moving very slow and poetic and in i remember them talking about it and it's in russian so it it is it is not the easiest movie to get through but Mm -hmm. if you do get through it and you uh and you get it or you feel something out of it Mm -hmm. uh it's it's so moving and it you know it speaks to life and art and cinema itself so it kind of has but it's it's really hard to read into the between the layers i'll be honest i did a lot of like wikipediaing themes and stuff afterwards so yeah i mean i like to do that too when i'm watching a movie like this because you know 1979 it takes place in uh you know wet like and you don't know exactly what they were thinking and you don't know the time as well so it's i i like to do my research and and put myself in in the shoes of the creators and and think about what they were thinking um I think people kind of frown on that, but I I love it. So yeah, I Stalker's so good. I really uh, would give that one a go. And then he and then Tarkovsky has another movie called uh, in the, its original language. It's called Ofret. But okay. The English title is The Sacrifice. Okay. And it's about these five people that are at a house, and you know they announce that their a nuclear war has begun. And ba- oh. basically the world is ending and it's sort of how they deal with it. But again, it's sort of like I took it as an allegory for one's life ending and, and how you kind of face that. And uh, just both those movies, Tarkovsky is just one of the best filmmakers ever. His yeah. shots are look so crisp and so perfectly colored, like like it's like a van gogh kind of like he just gets exactly where color camera movement should go like a kubrick you know very yeah. much like that so the poster for i know you said off red but for the sacrifice is is beautiful on its oh, own it's so good it looks it's so beautiful when you say tarkovsky i think like oh must be like someone from the 30s or the 40s but no the sacrifice is from 86 <laughs> yeah well that that's his last movie he died yeah right after um, I just saw that, but because uh, actually he I won't get too much into it. My understanding is that he actually, uh, when making Stalker, they filmed it near or on a like a nuclear waste site or like oh a, my god something along those lines, huh. uh, where basically like nuclear energy radiation was existing for them. Oh and, wow! And uh, I think he got cancer and eventually died from that. So. Jeez. I think a, some some of the other crew did, so it's kind of sad. But uh, but he but when he with the sacrifice, it's almost like he knows that and he's facing it and writes and makes this movie that's just like, just so deep, you know. I and and again, that. that that sounds sort of like I'm not even gonna say it again. But you know, it it I, I <laughs> no, don't don't. It sounds great. You're selling me on movies that like. Obviously, the Anderson and Brian didn't sell me on Stalker, so I'm glad you did. Yeah, it's um, a tough movie to get into. If you had, if you haven't seen that many movies before, I wouldn't start there. I wouldn't. Of course, I wouldn't, yeah. I'd wait till you've seen like a thousand movies at least right. before trying this. Uh, but yeah, th- those ones uh, both, and then Parasite. Also, I thought I was very close. Yeah. To putting Parasite on my list, I think that mm-hmm. is another movie that fully lives up to the hype. Mm-hmm. Um. But I feel like everyone listening to this has probably seen Parasite, and I agree. Anyone who who likes movies uh, probably saw it because it, it was like the most recent, like yeah. widely agreed upon masterpiece in a while. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I, I felt like it gets enough talk, but I think it's I think it's as good as everyone says it is. It does yeah. anything right. I think so. Um, I almost had Locke on the list, but then uh, I I want to see that. Oh, you have to see it. No, I, it's, I want to see that. It's just one location, Tom Hardy's big lips in a car. It's just, it's great. Mm, um, I got to see that. It's a big pour. Uh, yeah, Parasite, Hereditary, Scream, Flea, yep. Host, Mud. I haven't seen Flea. Or Flea is like, it's a, it's a documentary, but done in 
um a couple years ago right or last yeah year, maybe. yeah and i really fell in love with it it's it's about like a uh documentary and he's escaped he escaped his country and he's trying to and he wants his sisters to come over and yeah it's 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 beautiful um moon psycho slither minari suspiria fury minari, yeah. contact mm -hmm. dread and that's it dread yeah dread's a, lot, dread's a lot of fun it is a lot of fun high on the fun scale yeah. Very high on the fun scale. Like <laughs> Are you talking about you're talking about the remake, right? Because the, the original yeah. is called Judge. Judge. Dread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I uh I need to watch some older movies. That's you know, that's a great thing about movies. They're always there, you know. Yeah. They don't they don't age, but we but we do. So that's yeah. kind of the yeah. The way um, it works. And the older you get, the more you are able to appreciate some of those kind of movies so yeah i'd agree so now you get to assign me a movie well uh you know i'm gonna i'm gonna say i want you to pick one of the ones on my list that you okay. hadn't seen whichever one you kind of wanted to see the most uh or that's that sold you the most i would just okay just go with it. you you pick from those ones okay can you say your five again yeah my my five again uh were amadeus Mm -hmm. Amelie, mm -hmm. Marie Curie, mm -hmm. Casablanca, mm -hmm. Metropolis. Um, what was number two? Casablanca. Yeah, I'm probably gonna go with Casablanca. That that's probably the one I would have said is like, uh, as a film fan, I I feel like you. I feel like I need to. Been, you've been meaning. To, I bet you've been meaning to watch it for, for a sure. long time. And you yeah. just kind of needed a reason to like actually sit there and go ahead and do it. Yeah. No, I uh, I'm gonna do Casablanca. That's awesome. Okay. Can I pose it back to you for you to you recommend me a movie? Sure. Um. Always looking for Rex. Okay. I want more people to see this movie so i don't know if you've seen it have you seen xavier dolan's um mommy from 2014 no i haven't okay I've, I've been that's a movie i've been meaning to see since it came out yeah and it just keeps getting put. i'm gonna i'm bumping that up to the top of my watch list because um it came we just uh the film vault did top five canadian characters and they had me put my list and it was number one on my list. Um, it's one of my favorite movies. Um, I kind of almost forgot about it, like not forgot about it, but realized how few people saw it. Um, it's shot in Quebec and everything, but it's, uh, and obviously Xavier Dolan is a Canadian director. I just, I, it's one of my favorite movies, like top 20. Uh, it's, it's, it's just beautiful. It's relation. It's obviously a relationship between a, uh, son and his mother um so yeah so i'll uh, i'll throw that back to you and uh Perfect. when you when you see it you have to uh, let me know your thoughts i will and okay and, I, and i'm gonna follow you on letterbox too because oh uh, perfect I, I i didn't do that yet everybody okay. can everybody can Asshole. follow him at slash the mitch burns on letterbox. and everybody can follow mike at slash it's me you know that's me you know. that's a that's a that's a good name i like thank it thank you thank you um and you can also go to his website it's just mike avaloni dot, dot com um so that's mike obviously spelt mike uh with a k and then his last name is a v a l l o n e so mike avaloni uh dot com so and all of his reviews his written reviews and his podcasts are there um, is there anything else? I, I kind of plugged everything for you, but was there anything else you wanted no, to plug? No, thank you so much. I just want to express uh, my gratitude. Very cool to to talk to you after, you know, hearing your name on the podcast every single episode. And now like, oh, thank you. here you are in person, the real guy, and, and we're chatting about movies. So very cool. I'm, Thanks for having I'm me. I'm just a little Canadian guy just who loves movies and loves the film vault. So um so i i know i appreciate you i appreciate everybody who comes on it just it it means a lot that people want to chat movies because i could do it all day uh <laughs> likewise 
Yeah, and and I do like I like I go to I work I'm a custodian so I just listen to podcasts the entire time I'm cleaning up the school so it's just so I'm excited to listen to yours. Um, yeah, Great. yeah. All right. Well, maybe maybe I'll I'll invite you on if you'll if you'll accept the invite. I would. That'd be really cool. Yeah, I I love to talk about movies anytime. So uh, so yeah. So mikeavaloni.com and obviously your podcast is probably available on all platforms or it's, it's everywhere except spotify i need to i need to figure that out okay uh, yeah everywhere else you that you you can find it if you have okay. an internet connection you can, <laughs> you can make it happen okay perfect um so yeah so thanks everyone for listening to top five movies with one word titles uh you can follow you can find everything you need to my links at linktree slash the film vaulters uh, or you can go to my Facebook, Instagram at the Film Vaulters, and listen to the Film Vault. It says two episodes a week, but now they just do the one big episode a week. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you everyone for listening. Thank you, Mike. Um, we will. Uh, we who do we do it for? Van Gogh. Perfect. <laughs>